you make me wanna talk back Talk back to you Say you say you like that If I hate you then find someone new Yo guys, what's going on? It's me, KLV, and in today's video, we're going to be showing you my Cora build. Now, Cora is an insane DPS frame to have. Uh, she can one-shot a bunch of stuff. Also has a nice amount of crowd control of a fourth. Her Venari is a very good ability to also have, as Venari can also attack, uh, heal you, and also defend you. Now, I always have this on the heal, just so we get heals from it. What's well, very nice. And in Snare, what I actually recently learned on my Twitch can actually trap the Acolytes. I actually recently learned this on my Twitch. If you want to go check out my Twitch, link in the description down below. Stream Monday to Friday. Uh, someone told me that you can actually ensnare the Acolyte and actually trap them and basically stun them and they can't do nothing to you. So it is really insane. It is really, really insane. So with the build, we have got Shepherd. It's just a base polarity that is already on there. If you want to form that, what I probably will do, form that if you want to. But uh, it's just the base one that is automatically on there. So, I want to go through a couple of mods that you definitely need. So, the Whip Claw Augment. You want to 100% have the Whip Claw Augment, and you also want to have Pilfer and Strangle Dome. These two are really, really good. Uh, it depends if you want to build for the Strangle Dome, then have this. Basically, this gives you extra loot when your enemies are basically in the Strangle Dome. Uh, no, Whip Claw basically gives you more damage. So, hitting three enemies will grant a 35% stacking damage boot bonus to subsequent Whip Claws. Now, this basically just gives you more damage. I believe you get to 350%. Uh, sorry about the uh, noise outside if you can hear it. But yeah, I believe this can get you to 350% damage uh, bonus, what is very, very nice. Because more damage, what's wrong with that? Uh, next, we've got Rolling Guard. Rolling Guard uh, does really, really good. And if you're doing endurance runs and you like endurance runs like myself, then this can help you out a ton. Uh, one, if you run out of energy for some reason, then you can just go into your rolling guard and then you'll get, end up getting shield. I'll talk about more about shield in a minute and uh, everything about that. So next, we got stretch. Stretch, obviously you want range. Same with auger reach, these two basically the same. Um, you want to have range for your one and your fourth and your and your third. So basically the, the radius is just bigger. You can hit more multiple people with the whip claw and you can uh, grab more people with a strangle dome. So now the reason why Augur Reach is really really good is because basically 40% energy spent on abilities is converted to shields. Now if you don't know what shield gating is, oh boy, you should learn this. So with shield gating, what happens is when you take damage and all your shield is gone, you have a couple of seconds, like probably like a couple of milliseconds of time where you can't take damage. Nothing can take you damage. Now I'm gonna jump into the simulacrum and show you on what I'm on about. Right, so we are now jumping into the simulacrum and I'm gonna show you on what I'm on about about the uh, the little bit of invulnerability you have. You have a small invulnerability phase that if I am not invulnerable, there we go, that you have when all your shield is gone. So watch my shield. So look, no shield and you have, and you're taking damage. If you saw then, I was taking damage, but no health was actually going down. You can also do this with rolling guard and it helps out a ton. So again, we're going to get to zero shield, go in vulnerable, and then our shield will then start to regain. So I have that small invulnerability phase when you do it. Now, I'm not amazing at doing this at the moment because I'm in pressure, but it can help out a bunch. I highly recommend having an auger mod. doesn't really matter what, what it is, but at least one auger mod on your setup. So now what we are going to talk about is the fleet and expertise. Fleet and expertise is just so we have a lot of efficiency. So this does cost like 10, 10 energy. So you should be able to get 10 energy really, really quick. Next we've got prime continuity for the uh, ability duration because we want to basically cancel out this ability duration. Because if we took this off, uh, we have 40% ability duration. What makes this is eight seconds. You don't want that to be eight seconds because then you're going to be spamming that all the time. But then with this up, it has 19 seconds. So it gives about 10 seconds extra, what is very, very nice. And then uh, Prime Flow, so we have extra energy to basically uh, make an Arcane Energy is very useful. Uh, next, we have Arcane Fury for more damage. And uh, yeah, it's a very, very good build. And I'm going to show you on how the damage is actually like. What you're going to do is you're going to put them in the Strangle Dome and then use your one because then it basically chains them all together and it's a lot more easier. So now what you want to do here is you want to basically be getting your combo up. Now I'm just going to get my combo up really quick by just meleeing them because I can get on them up a lot more quicker. So we're going to get a combo up to a decent amount here. 
Now your melee isn't going to do too much damage. Your your normal melee isn't going to do too much damage because it's not for you using actual melee. It's mainly for a stat stick for your one. So here we've got them all tangled up. We've got a decent combo. Use your one. Look at all that damage. Look at all that damage. A very nice amount of damage. Two shot him right there. Do it again. Very nice amount of damage. You can get a very nice amount of damage in doing it. And uh, yeah, it's really just really good. It's really easy. We're going to talk about the stat stick as well in a minute. But again, you want to use your one. Then use your four. Use your, use your four, then use your one even. And you can see here, a lot of damage. Use your four. Use your one. And then, boom, one shot there. Now, this is normal enemies. This is not steel path. But uh, what you could also do is use your ensnare. Ensnare basically brings them all together like so. And then use your, use your four. Use your one if you want to. Now, I keep getting four mixed around, I'm sorry. But yeah, mainly what you want to be doing is using your four to then basically so you can get extra loot. Then you want to kill them all and you are also going to get extra loot. And you mainly want to be using your ensnare when there is an acolyte and you just ensnare your acolyte. Also, uh, Venari, I make sure I always have a set to either protect or heal. But uh, next, we need to go over the stat stick. So stat sticks are really, really basic. Now I have sacrificial steel and also sacrificial pressure on. This gives me extra crit chance and uh, more damage. So for example, if I take off my sacrificial pressure, my crit chance will go out. Because if you didn't go down, if you didn't know, these two combined give e each other basically benefits. So if I take my sacrificial steel off, my damage will go down. If I put it back on, my damage will go up. Basically, having both of them on increases both stats. So see here, steel uh, makes crit chance go down. If I don't have pressure on, put it on and give more crit chance. So basically having these two combined is very nice. You don't have to, but if you have the room and you want to get the most damage as possible, I highly recommend it. Next is having organ shatter. Now I have organ shatter on because this is a high crit uh, crit chance weapon and you saw I was getting red crits uh, at like 10 times combo, 11 times combo. When you get to 12, you're going to be hitting red crits all the time. Um, organ shatters because I get 4.9 times crit multiplier. That is a lot of crit multiplier. So um, yeah, a lot of critical multiplier, a lot of damage can be dealt. Next we have got blood rush. Blood rush is so we can then increase our crit chance even more so we can get them red crits because if you didn't know with crit chance, how it works is basically it's a, uh, there's a certain amount of crit chance you need to get to get them red crits. So here for example, for chance that any given attack will do bonus critical hit damage. Values over 100% have a chance to become orange crits critical hits and over 200% have a chance to become red crits and I believe over 300% is when you're guaranteed to get a red crit and this gives us 6% critical chance stacks crit critical chance stacks with combo multiplier so now I believe it goes up uh, 60 every combo multiplier but if someone knows on how exactly blood rush works please put down because I don't think it's 60 every time your combo multiplier goes up basically it's just very good to have blood rush on Next we've got Weeping Wounds, so we are procking uh, Corrosive more often. You can go Viral if you want to, with uh, Viral Slash was a very common um, way to go. But I have Corrosive on here just because the Acolytes. The Acolytes have, have Ferrite Armor, so having Corrosive on basically uh, makes the armor of that go down. And uh, makes you be able to potentially one-shot the uh, Acolyte, what well, is really, really helpful. Then obviously we have our toxin and our electricity to get corrosive. I've gone with 6 to 60. You can go with 90 90s if you want to. Uh, I prefer going to 6 to 60 so I have the status chance. Uh, next we have drifting contact. This is my personal preference. Um, I prefer having this on just so I have a longer com combo multiplier. And uh, it helps out a lot. We also get a nice amount of uh, status as well. But mainly for the combo duration. And uh, yeah that's basically been the build. Also you want to make sure you are using... Uh, Xenoric for energy. If you want to use Naramon, then take off the um, uh, Drifting Contact because there's no point using Drifting Contact and Naramon. So yeah, if you're using Naramon, take Drifting Contact off, put some more damage on. But I like going Xenoric so I can keep my energy pool up. But uh, yeah, that's basically been the video. If you did like this video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We very much appreciated. Uh, also, make sure you go check out my Twitch. I stream Monday to Friday, sometimes Saturday, about 9 a.m. UK time till about 3 p.m., 4 p.m. Uh, UK time. So yeah, make sure you go join our Twitch. And uh, yeah, see you guys later. Peace out.